and occasional uninformed politics, multiple, multiple talking, talking women, women is for you. you. Hit it! Hello, I am your host, Lana Brown. The texture of fresh nails against a foam wood wall. Priceless. Ooh, and it opens up the eyes and you're just perpetually a young, doe-faced 19-year-old. First time seeing the world. I'm Felicity Bramble Bush. Hi. I didn't see you there. Good thing I'm always camera ready. <laughs> you are not your husband's mistakes. You are not your children's failures. What are you doing here? Get out! My name is Paula Gherkin. I don't want to be followed! Jesus Christ. Hello. All right, let's... No, no thanks. No thanks. I'm not here for that. Save it for the other ones. Uh, all right, we're here tonight to do a live podcast. All right, what that means is we're, gonna, we're using microphones. It means that you can laugh, but not too much. Uh, all right, here's what we're doing to get rolling. Uh, first of all, I have to say a thank you. Did anybody have a margarita out there? All right, we want to thank our um, people who helped us get that alcohol sponsors, Elizabeth Bell, Eric Parmiter, and John Harris from RNDC. Let's give it up for them. Never met him. Uh, and Andrew Baker from Rockstar Brands. That's where we got that tequila. That tequila was uh, like 100 bucks a bottle, and we put it all in a vat. In a vat with some uh, mix. All right. Uh, all right, here we're going. So here's, uh, here's what I've heard. I've heard, because um, I've never done this before, I've never done a live show, I never have been in front of people, I don't like in a theater. Um, and I've been told that uh, people like to be pumped up before a show. Uh, I don't know why I would say, I, you know, I'd pump myself up before I got here, but uh, this. Uh, so anyways, I, I didn't know that till I was on the way. I was told, I found a couple guys up on Hollywood Boulevard who are, you know, kind of dancing and stuff. So I said, I'll bring them in and we'll pump them up with these guys. So uh, let's come in, boys. <laughs>
so ex incredibly exciting. Did you notice that I'm paying homage to Beyonce tonight? I do. Yeah, with those boots. Yeah, do you like them? I do. Thank you. Felicity, uh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Lana, I... <laughs> I, I, this feels a lot like when we auditioned for Cats in Simi Valley, doesn't it? It did. And all these people, all these people yes, here. Yes, and we became Jellicle Cats, as everybody knows. But that's right. Well, we want to make things get a little bigger in our lives. That's right, and that's why we're doing this podcast. But you know, I've learned so much from people, um, our guests on our podcasts. Um, one thing they say is, never let them see you sweat. And you guys will never guess where I'm sweating right now. You I'm sweating guess. everywhere because I'm so many different ethnicities and most ethni the best ethnicities sweat because it keeps you looking young. <laughs> That's good. That's you want to keep say. the skin moist. Natural uh, creams. I need to. I need to talk. I need to talk about something here. What? Okay. What's happening? <laughs> this is a. This is clearly a dress that is meant to cover things, and you, on She's purpose, opened it. Wider. Opened it up, so that. You know what? If you have it like this, is the world needs to see it. Mm. All right, if you say so. Like, I, I guess that's fine. I've just never ever seen someone wear a dress like that before. Wow. <laughs> it's shocking. You're welcome. Um, I want to say a big thank you tonight to just genetics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now. Did you, when you did um, Jellicle Cats, where you did Cats in Simi Valley, did mm. you get this kind of reception? Because they did that, nobody told them to do that. They just clapped on their own. How did that feel? No, I felt very panicked at that moment. My, my, my throat closed up, and I, I couldn't think of anything relating to cats. I thought dogs, and so I just launched into um, Dumb Dog from Annie. She loves that. It sounded like, <laughs> Dumb Dog. Oh my god. Sounded like that. My and audition. I did the entire cat's run on ayahuasca. <laughs> so <laughs> it was fun for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. This is um this is a lot, the live Your coat you know, is I've never really something this. different yeah, for you. Your, your don't coat looked don't like act like you didn't put me in it. I didn't ask to be in a sparkly jacket and I was told, you know, we're really dressing up tonight, and so I was forced. Yeah, Lana found that. It does look like someone ran a truck through a gold paint and then ran over that jacket. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Do you, you di don't you both have? You said you there are people you'd like to thank, and I put it on the schedule. Oh, yes, and yes. Neither of you, you are go, doing. You go it. Oh yes. Oh you my go gosh. First. Before I go any further, I'd like to call attention to my husband who allowed me to be a part of this event tonight. <laughs> do you please stand up, Senator Bramble Bush? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a proud GOP senator. My very own Peeping Thomas. <laughs> He's a recovering gerontophile, which means someone who's sexually aroused by the elderly, but we're working on that. God forgives. God forgives. That was not, that was not actually proven, as we know. I just have a lot of issues of Sunset Magazine. It, it, so that was just... It was. That's There's a, a lot of sticky Sunset Magazines well, around our house. There it you is. go. And I have the AARP uh, tote bag. I'm just I so happy do. you're home, and I look forward to laughing at Family Circus cartoons with you again. Oh, yes, mm. of course. Really God good. annoying my head with oil. Bill oh, Keene, a genius. Yes. Got oh, yes. Arizona. First came God, then George Washington, then came Daddy. <laughs> and that's me. You've got an hour and a half, and then I want you in the car. Yes, Father. <laughs> yes, Father. And I want to make a shout out to my number one partner, who is my rock, and to my son. But also, some of my lovers are here tonight. If you could please stand up for a moment. Oh, really good. He's a really good one. Wow. She's a really good one. Wow. He, he's a really good one. Wow. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, he's, he's the burly one with the beard. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, oh, and well, thank you to my for primary you. for letting me, you know, for letting me toss my seed, so to speak. She also has a seed. Now I know two of your two of your lovers were both they were both in Simi Valley, and one lived with his family who, but it was an open relationship. One lived with his family of origin, his abuelita and his aunts, and sh so she would make us tamales sometimes. And the other one lived with his wife and children. And Oh, there's enough to go around for everybody. Mm. Yeah, great. And then, so where are some of these people from? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. 
Barstow, Redlands, mostly inland, <laughs> inland dusty places. I'm drawn there. My moisture just knows it's needed there. Mm. <laughs> and you don't, you don't worry about your primary. My primary is so such a man that he can hack it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure he's got some, you know. Some no. No. Oh. Well, should we get to our first guest? Oh, yes. yes yeah, yes. are we, um, hey, uh, Scott in the booth, are we ready with our first guest? <coughs> I think that's a yes. Um, well, listen, yeah. our first guest is someone I can relate to because I'm the mother of 12. And, um, you know, kids always have stuff going on. They have dance recitals. They have soccer practice. Uh, one of my boys is a cracker model, so he does lots of... <laughs> Pepperidge Pepper Farm, right? Pepperidge Farm, Spe cracker modeling. Farm. Yeah. They have to be. Thank you. He has to be available for. I have to shuttle him to those. Um, but uh, so our, so our guest had some. Ha she has a child who had something come up. But we have her on Zoom. So we are so excited to welcome Maggie Baird. <laughs> Woo! Hi. Should we move? Hello, Maggie. Yeah, Hi, Maggie. Maggie, you uh, are a Groundlings Maggie. alum. Yes, I uh, <laughs> I spent many uh, years uh, at the Groundlings, and uh, it feels very sentimental to me to see you all there. Thank you for doing this, and thank you for the donation to support and feed everybody. We love you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, everybody. And tell us a little bit about support and feed. How did the, how did this organization begin? Where did yes. it come from? Uh, well, at the start of the pandemic, we were home and thinking about how so many people would need food and small businesses would close. And of course, we always care so much about climate change and the environment. And we wanted to do something that we could work all of those things into. So we, we started delivering plant-based food. Oh, actually, do you mind? Somebody just came in here and she wants to say hi. Can she I, say hi now? I guess so. Sure. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's I mean, okay. it wasn't planned, but oh, sorry. This is my my I daughter. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. A bit. Wow. Okay. Is, is that Billie Eilish? <laughs> I'm so confused. All right. I, okay. I have a question right off the bat. Does anyone call you nickname Eyelash? Is that fun? Um. Did you hear the question? <laughs> I don't think. I, I don't think she liked. I don't think she liked the question. I think this question. is showing that groundlings women make incredible children. <laughs> and as the skin person on the show, I have to applaud your emollients. I can only guess it's from your vegan diets. It's sh you're shining and beautiful. Thank you. Uh, well, this is this is. The, uh, I owe everything to this one right here. Yeah, She's really the you. best. The best to ever do it. And What's I mean like being a human, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ooh, what, is the, what is the trick? Skin. What is the mm -hmm. trick to raise, uh, to raise a successful child? I would very much like my Cracker Model boy to <laughs> have this, <laughs> have this level of success. Your son is a model for crackers? <laughs> yes, for Pepperidge Farm. He's very, very handsome. He's my Cracker Boy. Like crackers are been like, so, so how, how do you turn a cracker career into, you know, how, how do you then win an Oscar after that? Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I don't know that he can. Oh, shoot. <laughs> shoot. Oh, shoot. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Tell him to dream big. Never give up. Not give up hope. Okay. That's great. That we all need to hear that, don't we? Off. I'll do that. And, and uh, Billy, what was it like being raised by a groundling? Um, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. It was, um, life was, was filled with joy and laughter and, you know, getting, growing tough skin. You know, I think that I, I, I was raised with a family that could dish it as well as they could take it. And it was, and also just like very funny. My mom is extremely funny. You know, we're 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 at Coachella right now. Oh, and you're telling them. Okay, we're at Coachella. You heard it here first. <laughs> this is an exclusive. We've got an exclusive. 
Hey. We're fans, and we're literally here to see the show. <laughs> oh, shoot. So not an exclusive. It's a secret. <laughs> Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, is no, it nice to have... Do you guys like... Do you st- so you still like having your mom around when you're heading to stuff well, like this? Okay, but now I said that for no reason, so I'm not going back. So we're here, and we're staying with my, with, with my very funny friends. And what's amazing is that my mom, when she is in a room with me and my friends it's not like it's me and my friends and we're being funny and then my mom's there it's like we're all, all me and all my friends including my mom we're all like being funny together and she's cracking everybody up just as much as they're cracking everybody oh up. my it's god really- yes maggie yes yes, yes maggie I don't, I don't know if you have time but i actually want to tell you a funny story about please billy. okay so when billy started on this journey um you know she would get most of her clothes from the thrift store Mm-hmm. And there was a there was a bit that Amy Smallman and I used to do at the Groundlings, and we were like, let's say the polite way, the the correct way, we were sex workers, um, <laughs> but of the very of valid the crack nature, and um, we, we had this, this bit that we used to do. We had like the most horrible clothes, bird seed boobs, and just you know no teeth and horrible. And I had all my Groundlings costumes in the attic. <laughs> Billy was 13 or 14 years old. And so I came home one day and she had all these clothes down from the attic and she had my like crack whore outfit <laughs> and, and she had the yellow rain suit. She had all these horrible costumes and she goes, mom, what happened to you? You used to have such good style. <laughs> And then I went to the I went to the thrift store with her to shop, and because we were going to Australia for this um, tour she had, and she she bought got all these clothes and she brought to me these like really horrible brown polyester pants with a big elastic waistband, and she goes, "Aren't these great?" And I said, "That looks like something we would wear at the Groundlings." And she goes, "Well, from what you've told me at the Groundlings." They all have really good style. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Literally, wow. like zero memory of any everything we just said. <laughs> well, yeah, you've had a few things going on recently, <laughs> so I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's fair. Well, well stay moisturized out there. It's a very dry climate, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. enjoy the yeah. heat and the dust. Okay, and thank. You. Thank you for doing this for Support and Feed. We we are so grateful. And Allison Kingsley, who's the executive director of Support and Feed, was the managing director of the Groundlings when I was there. And then she volunteered. Everyone who worked for Support and Feed was a volunteer for a year and a half. Everyone volunteered. And now we have some staff, two of whom are sitting in the audience right now. And you can join us. Take the pledge. Can you stand up? Can we have those stand up? Support and Feed, stand up. Please stand up. Yes. Let's see them. Let's hey. see them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We so appreciate you coming on. Thank Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Billy. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. I'm not there. Look out for my son. Bye. 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 That was so nice. You know, sometimes kids get busy. You know, my kid's as busy as that kid is, you know? Yeah, sometimes, you know, you can't be somewhere in person because you're No, my kid got an award once, too. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing. Right? Mm-hmm. It's all the same. It's mm-hmm. all the same. <laughs> okay, so now is the time. I think we're ready. We have somebody who I'm going to stand up to and address this oh. person. He is a true Renaissance man <laughs> in that he is poetic. He's an incredible writer of in all ways. He is, you know, a comedian like just from the, from his belly to his face. <laughs> Very, but also he is a six-time Emmy Award nominee for drama. Who can do that? Who can be so funny and then so deeply dramatic? This man can. He's an incredible writer. I I just finished his book for the second time. It felt like my body was being filled with honey as I was reading it. (laughs) And I'm going to read a quote that he wrote in the book. Because he really worked hard, too. He wasn't this Nepo baby type person. He worked hard, and it's hard Bitterness, he says, is everywhere in L.A. It's what burns off the marine layer by 10.30 each morning. you got to find a way to combat it. But sometimes you just have to acknowledge it, smile at it, and turn it into a podcast. (laughs) 
too bad podcasts weren't invented then. Well, we are here now, and we're honored to have him on our podcast. Please welcome Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not as close to your face as you'd like it, but you know well, you can hold you can it if you want. Take, yeah. I want to apologize for how sweaty my palm is. I, um, <laughs> you know, I I've never be, never done this before. It's you know you know I, you know I don't get ruffled. I don't get razzled or ruffled. Um, but I am tonight. Okay, well, and yeah. um, you know, it's just a lot of we we're, we're surrounded a by a lot of, of great a lot of greatness. Oh, okay, good. No. So she was a huge fan of the action movie. Oh, nobody. And yeah, yeah, I like action. I want yeah. I want punching, I want fighting, or I'm not interested. So she goes on and on about your body. Yeah. She's Oh yeah. Yeah, that yeah. I want that as my that's my first question if you don't mind me jumping right sure, in. Jump How in. Did, what did you do? How'd you get yoked for that? I don't I don't think I was particularly yoked. Oh but I uh, I did train so I could do all of my own fighting in the wow. action yeah. sequences. And uh, and I think in the course of training that much you get toned. Sure. But I don't think I had like a rockin' bod, like many an action star. All right. Um, but I didn't want to. I wanted to look like a human. Like no, a that's right, because you're a so regular much guy. In comedy, obviously. And yeah. uh, I would think from laughing so much, yes, you would well, build you write, up. You just laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> and it's it never serious and hard, it's just nothing but yucks. But don't, don't you build some sort of core? Yes, it does build your core to laugh. That's what I would have thought. Uh, it's good for you in every way. You've probably heard of these gurus, the laughing guru. Or mm. There's an article today, I think, in the New York Times about the, the laughing doctor. Who I don't read. heals you by making... <laughs> <laughs> mm. I did listen to your book, but I, I stick with your book and the good book. That's what I stick with. What's up there? You leave your Bible up there? I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever I need it. When you need it, how do you get it? You get a ladder out and climb? I I'll never tell. Mm -hmm. I'll never you tell. You levitate? No. <laughs> yes. Well, levitation is more my type of world. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like to get into By the, the way, devil stuff. You can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. But we are best friends, yes. This is, uh, how is that possible? It's a great question. Good question. Yeah. I'm not a fan of either, if I'm honest. Yeah. A Satanist and a true believer, and well, yet uh, of, you know, uh, you know the I, Lord. I'm constantly trying I like to convert I using her. the word the Lord. So do because I think you. know why? Because it's just generic. And I call it my husband and my Zeus. father. It could mm -hmm. be Zeus. You could, you could go back in time, and you're not sure where you are. You don't want to insult anyone, and you just say, I worship the Lord. And they'd be like, great, you're good with us. God. That's true. And the Lord. To God's ears. Throughout history, yeah. there's like, I don't know if, if you hear the show Shogun that's happening now. Yeah. All those people called their husbands my Lord. Right. Because you're now you have How about a Satan's the dark lord. So that's right, he's he, the dark he lord. Works for anyone. That's yeah. right, that's right. <laughs> have you ever tried to get your wife to call you Lord? See what happens? <laughs> oh well, my no. That would <laughs> it wouldn't work out. <laughs> Maybe no, not, not work my out. My wife, she's a very a uh, powerful human being. Mm. Mm. Right. Yeah, so I, I try to avoid her. Yeah. Yeah. But you give her flowers. You know, they say a keep lot. your enemies close. Oh. That's right. Yeah. So I married her right away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's wonderful you allow your wife to work and. Yes. Exist and, and do things in the world. I, I think that's wonderful. Yes. I encourage her to take risks. Goodness. Take travel. As long as she has dinner on the table? Uh, I, I encourage her not to uh, join me for dinner. <laughs> interesting. interesting. It's a modern kind of scenario. <laughs> now, right. can I ask a question? Because you cook for your children. Oh, yes. So much to the point, and this guy's like the best dad, that you almost, you write in your book, did not take Better Call Saul because of the cooking and the taking care of the kids. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, the truth is, I think w one of the reasons the kids said, please do take that show, <laughs> was because they had had their fill yeah. of the four things uh -huh. 
Oh, so you, you I, cook, but not a lot of things. The four things, what are I they? I have a very, you know, it's a cafeteria style scenario, sure. but with a very short counter with only three bins. <laughs> yeah. One is always bins broccoli. Bins of food. <laughs> well, the four things were pizza made on uh, tortillas. Ooh, I've made a tortilla pizza. Thank mm. you. I, I think that's Thank you. nachos? Maybe. Uh, well... Sure, if you cut them small enough. Not if you do a pesto or a a tomato sauce. That's not enough. It's mixing Um, two ethnicities. uh, Meatballs. Oh, Uh yeah. Um, What kinds of meat in the meatballs, just out of curiosity? Pork and also beef. Oh, no, just beef. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. We don't get oh, he's not into two pork. meats at one No, you don't want to mix those. If I may move yeah. on. Um, do I want to know the other two things he did make for his children. Well, I, we have limited time. Thank Jeez. you. And you know I was just about to do that. He's one of the funniest it. people. Barbecued on chicken. Thank uh, you. Thank he, you. He wants to finish it. Thank you. He wants but to finish it. But not done on the barbecue. <laughs> oh, no, tricky. just cooked in the Just oven. in the oven. Bake them. Pick it up. Lazily, sure. sloppily. Wait, you cook it in the oven, but you call it barbecue? Well, it's sauce. Barbecue you got the sauce. sauce all over oh, it. I see. Oh, what else are you going to call it? No, I right. like that. <laughs> 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 I like that a lot. So you're one of the funniest people. Yes. Um, oh, uh, one more thing. Don't you want to hear the I do. Fourth thing. Okay. Yes, I'm Shepherd's on the... Shepherd's pie. Oh, oh Shepherd's nice. English. With frozen Shepherd's mixed pie? vegetables. That oh. is like... And then mashed potatoes... And uh, ground beef. Are you? Hold on. Did you always sing it like that? And now it's time for shepherd's Shepherd's pie. pie. And then start over. Now back back to to the the broccoli. Back to the tortilla. (laughs) Wait a minute. Okay, shepherd's pie. Are you making those mashed potatoes from scratch? That's a lot of work. That's a lot of. Yes. Yeah. No, oh. It's not that That's hard. how Especially he gets his biceps. Especially if mash them very well. Oh, yeah. Got Did you lumpy. make your children Always. call you Lord? My Lord, may I please have some shepherd's pie? Oh, my pie? goodness, no. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> my kids, as no soon one's as calling they him could, Lord. truly started calling me Bob. And it really hurt my feelings. Yeah. How old? It really, well, like 20 years old, 21. God. It really hurt my feelings. Well, it was because I was doing projects with each of them. Mm. And they felt mm. that in the course of doing the project, in order for them to have any real status, right. because they were with like a, sure. one was a book for kids, mm-hmm. so we were dealing with a publishing company and editors, and the other was a podcast for Audible. And, uh, you know, there's engineers and producers, and kids have to keep going. My dad said this, a dad. Right. Oh, this makes you know, sense. it's like, can I just mm-hmm. say, I'm going to call you Bob when we're working. Mm-hmm. But still, my feelings were hurt. I cried every time. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a strong that man that guy. he can express feelings like that. Do yes. your, yeah. your children laugh at your jokes? Uh, yeah, they, they do think I'm pretty funny in a silly way. Because you if know. they don't, what happens? Well, bec- no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Well, one time I remember my six-year-old daughter, I was doing like a really silly thing, and she just <laughs> stares at me doing it. Yeah. And she goes, and she goes, bad. Oh. So you, that helped you get better, probably. Well, I love that. Yeah. It, it was the perfect response. Yeah. She was yeah. honest. You yeah. talk a little bit about how in the industry there's a lot of... She could be a producer. Yes. <laughs> oh, I could, she, could, she could shadow me oh if she yeah, wants, because yeah. I produce this. Oh, yeah. wow. That's it's yeah. not easy. A lot of personalities. What a great opportunity. How do you deal with uh, <coughs> wild personality you you just must be an incredibly um, calming presence. Wow, that's nice. No, I um, say that. You know, I think I think the key is is that you know kind of whatever they say, you just kind of drive past it. Ignore it. <laughs> yeah, you kind of ignore it. You say okay, you know, y- you're the yes, you're the yes woman. You say yeah, 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 and then you go. Well, see, in improvisation, I yeah. don't know if you know anything. This is the temple of improvisation. The yeah, so I'm hearing. Oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, there's a rule, yes and. Right. It sounds like your rule is yes, no. It's true. <laughs> it's true. That's it's true. actually really like it this. Is true. Like Spot this. Like this is a big no for me, and I I so got. She n- comes to you and says, "What do you think?" And, and you I say, said, yeah, no. "No." I said, "Cover it up." <laughs> and then she came out here anyway. So it doesn't really matter what I yeah. say, you know. Yeah. She chose to, you know, show the whole well, world all her uh, wares. It works on radio. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I actually have to be honest. I think that's where we thrive, and we can continue doing this into our late, late, late years. <laughs> yeah, no one will know. Nobody will know. Now, you talk a little bit in your book about 
you know, f- there people ca- sometimes kiss ass <laughs> in Hollywood. But I feel like I want to kiss your ass because I genuinely think you're great, but will you lose respect for me if I am not just kind of like aloof? Like there's games that people play in the industry. Yes. I'm yes. so glad you asked this. Yeah. We, this I'm yeah. aloof for real. So yeah, that's true. But I really I might care. Be his favorite. I kind of think that you can tell what a person is being artificially oh, aloof. Oh, okay. So you got to be careful with Interesting. the pretending. To well, be you can aloof. because you're a, you're a you understand human behavior because you're an actor. Yeah, oh, you're a real actor. Um, <coughs> I think I can because what if, I'm anti-social. If you were to do it now, mm. what's that? If you were to p- do pretend aloof now, can we see what that I looks like? Yeah, see. what would that look like? Oh God. Yeah. See, and I've it feels that. hurt. I feel hurt. It's like yeah, not. Yeah, real. wow, that is good. Oh that wow, good. it's getting more intense. <laughs> yeah, more <laughs> intense. It's really hard true. to know. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Yikes. Wow. 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 This doesn't yeah. okay. not feel so good. No. So you see how it works. Yeah. It gets, it gets people chatting. Yes. Sure, you guys, it gets, it gets sure. people nervous. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you do. I think you do have to. You. You. I think the best way forward is kind of a honesty uh, yeah. that you can try to find yeah. because if you're pretending to be above things it's just going to fall apart on you yeah it's going to yeah. not work but th- one of the um the ass kissing is and i did talk about it in the book because i talked about my interview with lorne michaels the producer oh yeah, yeah i loved Live, it yes. and how literally I had to do the waiting thing, which he oh makes everyone good wait God. for hours. That's yeah. a power grab, isn't it? Give He's me a break. My, I, didn't, I don't think I had to wait for maybe two hours, an hour and a half. Not that long, really. And uh, But I remember in the course of that waiting time, I, I was thinking, what am I going to say? How am I going to handle myself? I have a, you know, a lot of time to think about this. And the more I thought of it, the more I thought the best way to do this is to be a little bit like forcefully aloof mm. and not act needy or even complimentary <laughs> wow. about yeah. Saturday. Act bold. critical yeah. Yeah. and yeah. <laughs> you know like I've got my wits about me and so I went in to this important meeting in my life and I was 23, 24. Wow. And at that age you feel like it's now or never man. Yeah. You gotta do it. <laughs> gotta make it happen. I know. And, and you do. I really yeah. forcefully uh, was aloof and uh, difficult um, to the point of like, would you would you be interested in writing on this show, <laughs> Mr. Michaels? Wow, asked. very good. And I was like, very well, good. I mean, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'd I love well, it. Th- this is great advice for us because we are trying to break into the biz, and um, and we are yeah, so, so desperate, and we are They're so desperate, desperate and so needy. Right. But to be able to cover that up. Hey, can you let him finish his story? Okay. Oh, no. I want to hear a little bit. I feel like there was more, and I want it all. No, it's very hard, because I would desperately have wanted that job at that moment. Mm. And if I'd shown that, I do think that would have been maybe off-putting. Right. So um, it's a hard one. There was a middle ground, maybe. There's a middle ground of sharing your genuine desire to Mm. do something big or be uh, offered an opportunity, but also trying to bring some of your... Uh, s- some degree of self-control into the moment because, you know, I mean, you're not going to learn anything from somebody who's just kissing your ass. You That's know. true. Mm. Yeah. All you're going to learn is they think they should kiss your ass. That doesn't even mean that they genuinely like you. Mm. You know, like a fan would be overly fawning. Right. Mm-hmm. And they, but they genuinely are enamored of you and and so giddy to be around you. But, you know. Somehow you have to split the difference. difference. But it helps to be kind of simplistically honest on some level. Mm. I would love that opportunity to be here. Boy, this would mean a lot to me just to start with that and then get critical and aloof. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. But also when you finish on your way out the door, Mm. it would mean everything to do this. Forget all those critiques. <laughs> yeah, right. Forget all those mean things I just said. <laughs> yeah, just hire me. Just I hire give me. Anything. I take it back. We really want to be in the industry because we're. I really want concierge medical care. Right. What industry? 
Oh. I want to be a person who can get concierge medical care and also gift bags with skin care. Yeah. She because wants free skin care. I know people. Free, you look like you do. Your skin yeah, is. Yeah, your skin is glowing. You're glowing. It's glowing. And you look healthy because you probably have concierge doctor. You, who know you, who else skin, you know who else has glowing skin? Our next guest. Oh, yeah, let's get that? let's yeah. get her out here. I let's get, get her out right oh, here. Oh, okay. Our next guest is a Groundlings alum, a Saturday Night Live alum. Her IMD page is a mile and a half long. She is starring in a new movie called Sue's that I believe is going to be released shortly. Shortly. And we'll she also stars no. in this movie that is so wonderful called You Hurt My Feelings. Oh, One yeah. of my favorite things is about her is that she does an impression of my hero, Barbara Walters. But you know what? I'll take Michaela Watkins because Barbara Woo! is dead. Here Welcome, she is. Barbara Walters. Oh, well, this so is fun. Much. You can do it either way. Either way. Well, that's a gentleman. Wow, that's real a, gentleman. That's a power move. Wow. Yeah, that's a gentleman. And obviously, he's a veteran of talk shows because that is... Well, that's why we said we wanted to have two people because I've, I've been studying, in preparing for this, I've been studying oh, wow. talk shows. Yeah. yeah. They bring someone out, and then they bring a second person, and then everyone kind of joins in. So I said, we got to do that. Let's get wow. a couple Great people job. out here. You're I am what else did you learner. notice? I'm sorry, you we're no. here to hear Michaela, but what else did you notice about talk shows? I mean, that's profound. <laughs> I I'd never She mostly watched Donahue, which is somewhat problematic. Wow. Well, I watched some old things I, No, I watched some <laughs> late night shows. Um, I learned that, you know, uh, the hosts they, they ask they, questions. They, they ask questions. There's there's banter. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You know, there's surprising moments, but what I look, I did research. Sometimes they're planned. Yeah, oh. and wow. we didn't plan it. We didn't plan anything. We don't no. do that. Never knew. Yeah. I never knew. That. Yeah. yeah. So sure you know, that's going to be how we're different. Is we're not planning anything. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, that's you know the that's the recipe for success. <laughs> <laughs> of a, of a so show. don't make any plans. It's planning, right? It's not. It's just completely not planning, winging it. Inviting oh. a, a sold-out show and just saying we're gonna wing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're having a good time. Well, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Sold out L.A. is much different than sold out New York, though, because uh, L.A. has got a bunch of flakes. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. But you know that's, that's okay. So true. Michaela, what, you both know each other because you both work in the biz. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. Everybody well, we in the biz knows everybody. That's what yeah, I. Yeah, we what uh, I have our. You know, weekly meetings. And yeah. We have to go oh, great. To it. Yeah. Um, and we, it goes like this. Okay. How's the biz going for you? It's Bob? going okay. Yeah. I made a lot of money this week. Oh, congratulations. Oh. That's How many houses did you buy while in uh, Only two. Only Just two. Just two houses? Yeah, one needs bills? work, so. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, I, what a headache. You? How many? Seven. Going on eight. Oh. Yeah. Busy yeah. week. Well, good week. Biz, the, you know, the biz is a busy time. Yeah, <laughs> this is what exactly what we thought it was. This is what we, we, what we thought it was. The great <laughs> thing is that you just go to the meeting, mm -hmm. and then there's a box usually, and yeah. you oh. put your hand in it and pull out a job, and uh, oh. yeah. you don't know what you're wow. gonna get. You know, you don't. Uh, know I don't what even you're know get. her name, but she's wonderful. Ooh, the oh, <laughs> the lady with the box. Yes, <laughs> the box. Oh, lady. nice. Yeah. Now, Michaela, have you ever received complimentary skin cares? Due to being somebody who's a celebrity. Yeah. Complimentary skin cares. Like somebody give you a bag with an expensive cream in it, even though you're the last person that needs the free stuff because you have money and the poor people don't have it. Yes. That is, um, that is the, 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 the stupid irony of the biz, which is mm. the, the fancy people go to a fancy party and they get fancy shit, mm. and, uh, and they're the last people who need it. And... Uh, it's 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 silly. Would you say it's oh silly? Oh man, at I the remember. Meeting? Honestly, I think it's how it should be. I remember uh, <laughs> one of the first shows that I got to really help create was the Ben Stiller show. Mm -hmm. oh. And I remember the, oh. there was a yeah. rap party, a rap party, yeah. and I was like, a rap party. Mm -hmm. I don't need a rap. I got to do a show. Yeah. Right, you're I already wrote. a winner. 
Right. Give a, have a party for everyone who wasn't on the show. Yeah. In like Hollywood. the people who auditioned and didn't get the parts. Just, That's it a great should idea. literally be, you are not invited on Thursday night. You got to do your own fucking TV show. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to you go to get this other party. Good stuff. That's you so got benevolent. anything you, you know. That's I, I mean, really felt I like crazy that we also got a party for ourselves. Oh, no, I, 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 that, uh, that we deserved. But I will say, um, <laughs> I will say that uh, I've noticed that uh, when, when they hand you a bag as you're leaving, the, the stuff in it is getting, like our business is suffering, let's be honest. Yeah, I've heard, I and Well, and it, it used to be better, yeah. It used to be better. And uh, I was told that when you were successful, they would just hand, <laughs> hand you cars. And uh, instead, they hand you sunscreen. So it's oh. different. It's different <laughs> now. Mm. What can I, is there something I can do, do you think, as a producer to get things going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'll have a list. I'll, okay. I'll email you yeah, how to check in with me because I'm, I'm actually looking for a new gig. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm just keeping my eyes open. Just keeping my eyes open. Hollywood and our keeping my eyes open. Oh, yep. Excuse cool, me, cool. we're cool. sitting right here. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> just keep my eyes open. Wow. Keep my options open. Okay. What? And now I have a just a general question. Mm -hmm. What kind of woman are you? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's nothing. That's the most specific question I've ever been asked. <laughs> and uh, I'm a woman who, excuse me, Senator, I uh, enjoy Sunset Magazine. A lot. Okay. I think it's got some great tips about Feel free to hang out. Van no life interest in you. And uh, <laughs> some wonderful, young. like, thrifty tips for campgrounds and where to go, uh, you know, into a, 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 a hot spring. Yeah, you're, ru you're a rugged gal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a granola gal. Yeah, I yeah. am. I am an earth, I'm an earthy chick. Earthy. What yeah. about you, Bob? Do you get into the earth? Do you do any do camping, stuff like that? I hike. Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually hike a lot. Um, where do all the people in the biz hike? Yeah, where and what time? <laughs> <laughs> there is it's an right answer. It's right after our gold. It's our called our Runyon Canyon. Leaf Runyon Canyon. Canyon. Ah, our it's gold, gold leaf facials start at 2 p.m. <laughs> and then we have golden the facials. Is that are you talking and about? And then your, we have the sweat. Urine? We the have the sweat challenge. lodge from three to four. Yeah, three to four sweat lodge. And then we have the uh, affirmation ceremony. Oh, affirmation ceremony. <laughs> yeah. You know, tell each other how great you are. Yeah. <laughs> we um, use the word love a lot. I yeah. love you, and you're brilliant, and you're a genius. We say yeah. that a yeah. lot. That's yeah. Yeah. You guys would like that. Yeah. You need yeah. that. They need that yeah. a lot. It's hard. The self-esteem is plummeting now very did you deep. Did you know each other before you were at this Caliber in the biz. Yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Tell Wait, us about from that. From like childhood? No, not from childhood. Nobody oh. in the biz knows each other from childhood. Where are you each from? Where are you from? I'm from Syracuse, New York. Nobody in the biz is from Syracuse, New York. I'm from Naperville, Illinois. Oh. Nobody no. from the biz is from Naperville. No, you're the Illinois. only two. You're the I only think. two. Right. Um, Excuse but me? <laughs> He's singing. I can sing. Wow. Oh. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you pull your week's duty out of the box mm -hmm. and it says sing. Oh, so you have to sing a bunch this well, week. That's right. just tough shit. You know what? what did you sing? that every week for years. You know years. what? I just want to say you're a brilliant singer. I love it. You're a genius. <laughs> I'd love to hear a little bit. Well, see, that's a kind of affirmation. And that's why she's so good at that and yeah. it comes across so honest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I believe because it. she's got just practice. Just tell us, was that, is, were yeah. you being honest? No, no. Was I? See? Wow, wow. I still don't, I don't know. know. I don't and know. this is another skill that you learn, which yeah. is uh, obfuscation, mm -hmm. right. which is important, you know. Yeah, don't ever really answer it. We are learning it. so much tonight. Yeah, it's incredible. So Wow. Well, there's a lot, and if you're not in the biz, you're not in the biz. And, and if, if you're, you're not in, at you're the in. meeting, you're not at the meetings. So yeah, and it's not. So, uh, it's, uh, you know, listen, it is a closed system. And um, it when did is you know that you had arrived in the biz? Did a bird deliver? Oh, I read it on the internet. Oh, oh. no! Was, was there a job for you that was like, oh, okay, maybe I can do this as a living? Um, wait, wait, what? Like early in the career, did you get a job that you went, oh, maybe I can actually make a living at this, and I don't have to, you know, whatever, wait yeah, tables? Yeah, I or was, uh, I was 15. I was a sophomore in high school, and I did a community theater production of See How They Run, which was a British farce, and I played the maid, and I said, hello, I'm Ryder, I'm the maid. 
And that's when you knew you'd made that's it? That's when I knew. Okay. That's when I knew I could do this the rest of my life. Wow. Okay. Wow. She sounds British and also like your old Jewish grandmother yeah. Yeah, at the mix, same time. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, Edie Patterson, who is she also at our meetings, um, <laughs> she, um, she uh, said to me when we were in the Groundlings together, she said, You're, you know what you are? You're a 75-year-old uh, in a hot girl's body. <laughs> That's good. Don't, I, I, I don't say that, that in front close. of the senator, please. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> don't stay seated, sir. Stay right. seated, sir. <laughs> and what about you, Bob? Did you have a job that you said, oh, I think, you know, this is going to be what set. I do? I'm here. This is happening. Um, yeah, I, 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 have, I have had such a strange uh, wavering. Look, I think I always thought if I was diligent enough, I could do it, because I'd show up right. steadily. That's what um, he said about his book. He said but, he worked um, hard. He worked really hard yeah. Honestly, I do think, you know, maybe I had some sense of that when I came out to L.A. after Saturday Night Live, which, you know, was hard, and but I, I sweated and suffered there. Mm -hmm. But when I worked on Get a Life, and I was in L.A., and I was working on a show, and it wasn't as intimidating as SNL or even close, Maybe that made me feel like I'm part of a community and I can make my way here. Yes. Mm. Wow, my, so it would be it. my second real job. Made me feel uh, somewhat, sen some sense of landing. A little stability. In the right place. Yeah. Well, but maybe it was more the community than the actual job. Uh, that is the, what every, you know, er mm. I would say everybody says. Like mm. the shooting it is, or work, you know, being in the Groundlings was the happy place. Place. It wasn't the, it wasn't any of the other stuff. But if so you're working as a professional, is yes. there food supplied to you, <laughs> on set, you and get, yeah. potentially a medic in case something happens? Because there these are oh the yeah. things that I find, you know, you're safe. Right. You think a medic is going to make keep you safe? <laughs> you know, praise God, one day I'm on a set like that and something ha even if something doesn't happen, I'm going to visit the medic just to say, do I look like everything's going to be okay? <laughs> okay, here's the thing. 98% of the medics look like they're a little high on their own supply, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Got it. Well, yeah, to get a job know. like that, that's a that's probably a pretty sweet job working on a set I as a medic. I would think so, though you mm -hmm. wouldn't know it from talking to a medic. Oh. When they're just yeah, like they yeah. give you a sash <laughs> and a basket. A sash. A, the yeah. medic gets a sash. Yeah. Oh. oh, pretty good. Yeah. yeah they get a uh, sash and a basket. Actually, I have a funny medic story. I want to hear. Oh, I had a heart Big incident. On yes. On the set of Better Call Saul. Oh, do you mean where your heart stopped? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pretty much stopped. Oh my it, goodness. It it. it Slowed down to a point where I turned gray and stopped breathing. <laughs> My <laughs> God, that's <laughs> and, uh, and the medic came around the corner and he froze in his tracks. It was his first day. Oh no. On the job. <laughs> and he said, Oh no. Were and you? He didn't move. Were you aware that no. he was saying that you were no, out by then? I was gone. Oh my gosh. Uh, and later he apologized to oh. me. Weeks later, when I came back, he said, I'm so sorry. I. I can't it was my first day. Um, <laughs> I have been a firefighter, and he was retired, mm -hmm. and he said, I'd never actually done CPR. I'd only ever watched other people do it. But then oh. he did do CPR he on you. He did do it, it, but it eventually, took him a second. but other people did it first. Thank God you, my point. Thank yeah. God my you point. lived. Thank God you lived, yeah, because, thank God wow. you lived. because that yeah. guy would have been pretty messed up for pretty the rest of his up. life, yeah. probably. <laughs> if you hadn't, you know? Honestly, wow. that is yeah. wild and also validates my point. But but really, and that's <laughs> that's the important thing here is that I'm genius and you love me and I'm brilliant. But <laughs> I I can't I, I am so grateful. I am so grateful because a heart event is really the scariest thing and well I, it was it. scary for everyone else, but not for me because yeah. I just disappeared. Oh you really? know. I did mean you in my head. did you go to did you go anywhere? You I did anything? not go anywhere. No. I just went into the black. Wow. Mm. Into nothing. the void. I went into nothing. Right. And when you woke up, what? How did you feel? Yeah, where were Great. you? Oh, because you had yeah the drugs yeah. and stuff. I really felt awesome. Because you yeah. had that Michael Jackson drug. Uh no. Oh, I suppose I did. Yeah, they did put Propofol, me into like yeah. a yeah. coma a twilight. thing. Yeah. I like that stuff. Um, so I love uh, it so much. I want to just like <laughs> I'm always yeah. any when procedure. I woke up the next Knock day. Out. Now I don't remember waking up the next day because I have no memory for a week. But I know that my attitude was the same. 
for like the next two months, which was every time I would wake up, I'd be like, hey, wow. And it wore off that already. That is awesome. That's with pretty what's cool. That? It wore off already? Um, yes, but I do remember it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it kind of means something that I had that experience. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. the um, I do think it was the drugs that they gave me uh, to sort of steady my body and sure. my you know system. But I I know that uh, everyone said I was kind of cheery and upbeat in the hospital, but also I had no memory. Uh, but I was like, let's go. We got to. I got to do the show. We have to do the show. And they're like, no, you can't do the show. And I'm like, why not? They, they asked me why I was in the hospital. Oh. Uh, why do you think you're here? Wow. <laughs> and I said, well, I came here. <laughs> uh, and, they, and they said, Makes well, how did you me. get here? This is when my wife and kids were in the room, like the next day. And I said, um, uh, I drove here. Oh, oh, wow. And they said, well, where's your car? And I said, oh, it's in the parking garage. You had an answer and, for and everything. Yes, I did. <laughs> and they said, what well, yes why did they said, I'm in, the, I'm in a bed, right, yeah. with things hooked up, yeah. and I'm in the robe, and I had uh, heart surgery yeah. the night before. And they said, um, why, why did you come here? And I said, <laughs> well, I heard you guys were here. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's and that was kind of like... Um, but literally, uh, so I started having a memory about eight days later when I left the hospital was my first memory. But still, every day after that, for about three weeks, I still woke up with that feeling of like, all right, this world's pretty cool. Look at this See, world. See, this That's is what you great. get. God, I love it. Nice. Yeah. I love but it. But I think part of it was, uh, my theory on it is, you know, you carry around a lot of um, anxiety, <sighs> and it even goes over from day to day, obviously. And I, that, I didn't have that. Yeah. I didn't wake up with my brain immediately filling oh, with wow. the worries and concerns of last present. night. You're being present. Well, That's what it is. Well, drugs. Uh, <laughs> What'd you say? But the drugs. <laughs> but no, but, <laughs> but I But the mean drugs <laughs> wiped it clean. It started you fresh. You got yeah, a clean slate. Yeah, the drugs slate. cleared it. Yeah. And uh, and every day it took a while. It took a couple of weeks for my brain to get like, come on, man, we gotta right, get right. We got things to do. We gotta be anxious. Yeah. Maybe on your website you could list the drugs that Bob was That's on. That's really smart. Do you um, think yeah. you would have been able to function in the world had you stayed in that state? Um, yeah, <laughs> I could have been a toll booth operator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something very low stress. Uh, yeah. Happy, everything's thing. great. But God, I want this drug so bad. Honestly, it was now. Uh, it was really great. Yeah. And it is worth having had that experience. Propofol. Yeah, yeah it's worth, worth having a heart I, I feel like there sure. could Propofol. be a coffee table book of Propofol. transcripts of people coming out of anesthesia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is like... There should I be. Had a, I had a colonoscopy once, and I, I came out talking about succession. And oh, uh, The succession of your bowels, <laughs> right? <laughs> And I was like, re I started like talking about, I, I came out talking about what a great show it is. And, um, and I stand by that. But <laughs> I, I, I had to have a big like hysterectomy surgery. We've talked yeah, about that. Yeah, my cousin Ariane yeah. Price had Ariane one too. Ariane Price <laughs> had yeah. one too, yeah. I'm sorry, when I say we, I mean um, your doppelganger. And I, I came out and I just was so happy. And I remember my gynecologist said to me, you're, you must be a, a happy person. And I said, why? Oh. And she said, because you were so grateful afterwards for everything. Wow. And, I, and, I, and you were so, she, sa she didn't say you were grateful. She said you were <laughs> very complimentary of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, I'll take it. I think you better start <laughs> compiling this book. I do too. Take you know, it. my yeah, cousin, yeah, after she had her hysterectomy, was singing um, Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> <laughs> and... God, she talks about life without a uterus is one of the best things in the world. Yeah. Ladies, you know what a life without get a it uterus taken is? out. Yeah, take and it out. No, no disrespect, but I, um, gals, gals, lean in. Um, it's this. It's <laughs> when, when you don't have a uterus, that weird, this is my theory. It's just a theory, and I'm working with it, and we can just dismiss it as soon as I say it. But... I think that primal thing that's subconscious and way, 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 way below the, the, the terra firma yeah. is the terra firma, I guess, is this notion that we're supposed to, you know, somehow procreate and therefore we have to please men in some faction so that we are accepted, so that there's survival and all these things. Yeah. 
And then when you take out your uterus, that sub I love whoever just clapped. <laughs> and then when you take out your uterus, this sort of people pleasing thing dissipates completely. Wow. And you don't give a fuck. Yeah, Orion doesn't give a shit anymore about men oh, or anybody. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. And I have and yeah. I think that's why people say women over a certain age are crazy because what they mean is you no longer get care what I think and therefore I'm going to call you crazy because um, yeah, you're I not think doing it's what you're supposed to do. That you're not doing what you're supposed yeah. to do, and therefore, how do I render you somewhat less valuable? Let's mm -hmm. let's um, let's just say you're crazy. Maybe that's a good wow. like general blanket. Anyway, well, my takeaway is I'll cling to my Thanks uterus with my dying breath. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to take care of her her father, that's as right, she calls father. her husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I have I have a uterus. <laughs> I have a uterus. I but I uh, don't care about yeah. anything. Yeah. So I wonder. Oh, so I wonder if I got it taken out, if that would just go to a whole other level. And I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm scared of you if they did. Keep it in. All right. <laughs> Definitely keep it. Definitely. Okay. I would say this is the time to ask for a little bit of, even though you've already dropped a lot of words of advice yeah. for not just people in the industry, but people struggling to just find their way. Because you guys found it beautifully. Yeah. Wh wh what would you say to someone, you know? And I'm a late Fiber. Really? Oh. Mm. For real? Well, sort of. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because yeah. you're looking bright and no, clear. Yeah, well, you've got to have fiber for a healthy heart, clean right? Clean out your vessel. Uh, yeah. um, but we were talking about hiking. Hiking yeah. is really good for you. Walking a lot yeah. is mm. really good for Especially your brain. Especially if you're a writer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if, if you're trying to make it in show business, you feel like you've got to have stuff like that, uh, like to keep uh, yourself oh yes. I'm sane. Well, I think it's good for any business you're in okay. is to be in nature and walk a lot. I used to go for a run around the Silver Lake Reservoir and I would when I was writing I was writing a show called Benched and it was Congratulations. Like Congratulations. Yeah. It was a it was fantastic many, many show. Ago. She made but it. She created it. We um with Damon Jones who was a groundling and yeah. um and I would get stuck in the script and I would start the uh I would start the run I would ask the question and by the time I got around the reservoir I had the answer. So wow, jeez. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it was like Jesus might have been there too. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So walking and stuff and probably if your job is a professional outdoors person or hiker, then you do something different to let go. Yeah. 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 You should be you should be watching a lot of television. Yes. Yeah. And here's the second thing yes. um, to add to that is I would say this. So I was just at a birth of my of my nephew and his partner. And she's a real people pleaser, and she kept apologizing. Because she has that for giving birth, birth. Yeah. she was for apologizing. She was apologizing for crying. She was apologizing for being in pain. She was apologizing for the epidural not working. She was apologizing across the board. And I kept and I said to her, I said, "Sweetie, this baby's going to come when you don't care what anybody in this room thinks." And I went away for a minute because they had to replace uh, an epidural. And I came back, and the look on her face, and she said to me fuck this shit. I didn't want to have to have a C-section. I didn't plan this. And that guy, that anesthesiologist put it in wrong. And this person did this. And, da, 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 da. and my dad was right. The head's too big. There's no way it's coming out. <laughs> and I go, sounds like we're about to have a baby. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I would say about our business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to um, not give a shit. We have a lot to learn because we <laughs> care <laughs> a lot. Yeah, you we care. care a little bit right. too much. You want it too bad. Um, yeah. I yeah. have a favor to ask of you two. I hope you don't mind. Um, Scott, do you know if my cousin's here? <coughs> yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I invited, I hope you don't mind, I invited my I cousin. Uh, he's just an aspiring filmmaker. Oh, wow. Cool. And, um, I love that. Yeah, so and just, rare. and I, I know I didn't, I know, <laughs> yeah. I know I didn't tell you Thank guys you. Uh, about that this was going to happen. No, but, um, you didn't I say thought, anything about that. Well, I thought, you know, if I'm doing all this work, I'm going to help a family member. Um, so, uh, anyways, if you don't mind, I'm just going to bring my cousin out. Can you come Please. on out? Where are you? Oh, great. Come on down. Yeah, great. And you've got a microphone oh. here to ask your questions. Oh. Here you go. Oh, oh boy. And ask your questions. Your cousin is Hello. so handsome. Hello. That's great. great. What's what's his name? Is he his name? Do you know uh, your cousin's name? Hi, welcome. What's your name? Hi, Seymour hmm. Whitaker, fellow filmmaker. My uh, brother couldn't be here. I have a brother. Uh, 
he washes the sheets at nighttime. <laughs> Thank you. Whose Who's sheets? Thank you so much for sharing all your filmic experiences. See, try to get closer to the mic. <laughs> so moving. So tense, the uterus. All the stuff about the uterus. My brother and I, as my cousin said, my, my brother and I, are, we are also uh, making fellow. and doing, fellow film, making and doing a film. Uh, it's about uh, diabetes during Jesus' time. <laughs> so my f first question is for um, Ms. Uh, Watkins. I, I never saw the program, The Unicorn, um, but had you ever played a unicorn before? <laughs> and would you be willing to play barnyard characters or animals in someone else's production? <laughs> at, at a ma maybe at the manger. <laughs> I'll take my answer off mic. podcast so that nobody can see you. Um, okay, yeah, no, I haven't. And also, I learned after the making of The Unicorn that my friend uh, is, a, is a, uh, in the polyamory community, and she said that actually what a unicorn is is not what CBS thought it was. CBS thought it was a, a widower who um, was on, back on the dating market, and they were a unicorn because they weren't like just a loser; they were like just a sad guy. And it turns out that a unicorn is uh, a woman looking for a couple to be in a throuble with. Yes. And I so. am and, looking. and the answer is <laughs> the answer is on the fence <laughs> about that. What did you say? So I'm also a unicorn. Oh, great. Congratulations. So Seymour, bottom line is there wasn't a real unicorn in that, and you said you were going to do prep, and you were going <laughs> to research before you asked questions. So the, ans the answer is no. <laughs> Play and other barnyard animals. If the answer is TBD. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Um, my next uh, question is for Mr. O Odenkirk. Uh, this is a question about your processes. Um, I read that on Better Call Paul, you worked in a... <laughs> you worked in a, a Cinnabon factory. Did you ever eat so many Cinnabons that you got the diabetic shakes? And if so, did you have to use a special camera for that? Because that would be costly in my script. I'll take my answer off, Mike. Thank you for your question. Uh, it's very perceptive. Um, in the course of portraying the character of Paul in the show, I had to eat uh, Cinnabons. And because we have to do multiple takes of any scene, I had to eat so many that I did go into a diabetic shaking fit. Um, I think I had to eat two, <laughs> and it almost shut my body down and my brain, and I still haven't recovered. Uh, but thank you for asking. Uh, they did use a special camera. Uh, you're right. Um, it, was a ger it was a German camera, and um, it was uh, it was it it um, you know it kept my it kept my um, it, what it did was uh, it compensated for my shaking. It shook as well. Uh, and the camera was had a sugar sort of base. It was also having a shake. Sit. But the two shake fits at the same time nullified each other to the it was steady. Oh, wow, wow. All right. See, oh, right, 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 Sarah. right. Okay. Seymour. You get one more. That sounds you get expensive. One more. Okay. Um, one more. My last question uh, is for the two of you about your processes. Um, I've noticed in all your work, you've always worn a wig. 
Have you, have you ever worn a Jesus-like wig? Do you still have it? Because I'm having a hard time finding one on Priceline.com. I'll take my answer off, Mike. Thank you for taking your answers off, Mike. It, it's um, make, there's a tiny recorder. He wants nothing me to speak. says. It's a lot. I don't have a Jesus wig, but I have used many, many wigs, um, and uh, they are made by professionals, and they cost a lot of money. So I'm not sure how you're going to get one, but yes, they are uh, an expense. Yeah. Yeah, I would just say, I would just say, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I love, I, I think you're, I think it's genius. I think it's genius that you were, that you're so, the tenacity with which you're going for it. And, and it's brilliant that you thought maybe you could bid on one on Priceline. Um, and I love it. Uh, but I just, I feel like, n no. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> All right, Seymour, that's, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Thank you. I, Thank it's you. always Thank great you. to meet a fellow filmmaker. Thank, yes. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Thank you, so I Seymour. Like to, Thank you, Seymour. I would like to take a meeting with him. I would like to fund. Yeah, I mean, I think you could, if mm -hmm. there, you could definitely get in his movie. That's for sure. Yeah. I have a lot of cracker money. Gosh. <laughs> and I don't have a Jesus wig, but... You know. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some fake hair on there. I think that works. Yeah, that would Something work. Something of this nature. That would work. I can't believe you showed the crowd, um, you know, that your no, hair... No, if there's one thing about me, I'm very real. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, we all are, right. We're, I can't believe it, but we're already heading into that time. Okay. And well. um, is Wait. there any... Do you, can you give us... I want to hear... I want you to blow my mind with, some, with a piece of information. Okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Bob? Pluto's not a planet. Wow. wow. Is that true? According to the astrological what is it? scientists, it's too small. Oh. It's an asteroid of some sort. <sighs> oh, I don't believe in to space. Uh, <laughs> it's going to change my... <laughs> Doesn't believe in space. Uh, do you have any any information you want to share? It doesn't have to blow our minds. It just can be information. Oh, okay. There's a nail polish that I was oh. uh, <laughs> looking for that would feel like a gel, but not, you know, take off seven uh, layers. You want me to find that for nails. you? No, I found it. Oh, it's um. But I'm not. I'm worried. I don't know what it is because it only seems to come in kid colors. Oh. Um, and by that I mean. Kid colors, yeah. uh, and but I ordered some, and uh, it's really easy to put on, <laughs> and it's really easy to take off. You heard it here first, <laughs> exclusive news. Exclus Billie Eilish is not at Coachella, and you found the nail polish. <laughs> that's it. Two and biggest that's things. The biz. And that's, that's the biz. And that's the biz. That's the biz. Thank um, you now, both. As we wrap Thank up, you. we have something very exciting. Oh, geez, okay. we haven't heard about okay. this. Uh, yeah. yeah, yes, you have. Uh, <laughs> Um, what I need, uh, let's get that, let's get
comes to our meetings, you should know. Tracy, oh, Tracy, Tracy comes. Oh, she gets to go to the meetings. Tracy goes That's to the meetings. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. You know what? It goes by too fast, but that is uh, it for our podcast. Before we say goodbye, I want to thank Stampede Ventures. Thank you, Stampede. Who, uh, you know, for some reason is giving us this opportunity, and I don't thank know you. why. Thank you. Very special. And Carafano. Carafano, everybody. Carafano. We don't know why she likes us so much, but she does. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you to the Groundlings. Thank you. Thank you.